Welcome to renovating a vintage workshop type steam engine. This is part 5 and I'm showing how I fix the cylinder. The cylinder casting is damaged as you can see here and the first thing to do with it is to put it into a polythene container, not plastic, because I'm going to pour cellulose thinners all over it. This is premium cellulose thinners but it doesn't have to be premium, any cellulose thinners will do the job, I just prefer the smell of the premium. Not that I'm into sniffing thinners, it just doesn't smell as bad as the cheap stuff. I generally use cellulose thinners more than once, so when I finish with it, I put it through a filter paper and back into another can. This stuff is called Milliput, and it is a really excellent product. I cannot sing the praises enough of Milliput, I've even put it on a small mahogany stand. Milliput is a two pack epoxy putty. You mix equal quantities of the two parts together, and it forms a putty that can be used to repair things. It's nothing like car body filler, when this stuff sets, it sets really hard and you can drill it, file it, tap it, anything you want to do with it. It's an excellent product, it's been around for many many years and I use it for many applications. Some of the applications are here, on the actual instructions. Always read the instructions before using this product. The first thing to do is to make a brass sleeve to go around the stud. If we just screw the stud into what's left of the casting and then fill all around the stud with milliput, the stud will not come out and I don't want this to happen. So what I'm going to do is make a simple brass sleeve. It's a quarter inch diameter hole down the middle of a piece of brass. Here you see me at the lathe actually making the part. I used a centre drill first on a piece of brass and then I drilled it out a quarter of an inch internal diameter and then I faced off the end of the part. I initially made the sleeve longer than I needed it because I needed to machine some grooves on the outside of it so the milliput would grab and hold it in place. As you can see it's a nice easy fit on the stud because I do not want it to bind. This clip shows the sleeve with the external grooves machined. I'm just rechecking the fit after I put the thin sleeve back in the chuck to make sure it hadn't been crushed and become too tight a fit on the stud. Before I can obtain the finished dimension of this sleeve I need to fit it in place because I will need to profile one end to fit the damage. But before I do that I need to thoroughly clean up the casting. This damaged part has been damaged for a long time and even though it's been in a bath of cellulose thinners there will still be traces of oil and dirt in there. So by using a small drum sander in my Hobbycraft drill I'm cleaning up the old metal where the break has occurred. Apart from using the drum sander to clean up the broken casting I'm using it to enlarge the part slightly where the sleeve's going to fit. This really takes it out of the small sanding drums and I did have to change the drum a couple of times. But in the end, it's looking quite good now. Here you can see where I've shaped the end of the brass tube. I did this on a grinder, it's a very simple job although it does get a bit hot and burns your fingers. So now it fits quite snugly up against the damaged part of the casting. I then measured the length of the sleeve and cut it to size. Now it's time to use the milliput, I'll speed this part up because you don't want to watch me mixing the stuff. All you do is cut two equal lengths and I always cut too much and then you knead it in your hands until it becomes a uniform colour. Then it can be applied to the damaged casting. One of the great things about using milliput is that it is water soluble and if you're using a lot of it I would have a little pot of water at the side of me but for a small job like this I can just spit on my finger. As usual I cut far too much milliput and you can see it on the table to the left of the cylinder so I thought I will repair the part around the flange. I don't really need to do this as it's covered by the cladding but I did the same thing, grind it away with the drum sander and fill it with milliput. Here's the milliput I had left over and here's a piece I prepared earlier and another piece from much earlier. That's black because I coloured it black as an experiment. With this excess milliput I could make a collection of small easter eggs or I could make a scale model of the solar system. When using any chemicals that may be harmful it's very important to wash your hands. Milliput is water soluble so washing your hands thoroughly will get rid of the residue. And don't forget before you wash your hands at the end of the session do not touch any other people and do not touch any other parts of your own body. Just a bit of health and safety. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.